Five seconds remaining. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here we are, final match of the night here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your little bit of a break there, but we got our final match set up now. Team Freedom taking on Duop here in this two-game series. So this is the Star Ladder I-League Star Series American Region Qualifiers, of course. And once again, I'm Breaky CPK, and I'm going to be joined by my co-caster again here, Tsunami, joining me. Welcome back from the break, man pleasure to be here i don't really know why this game is being played i'm not complaining by any means <laughs> but uh this is team freedom who is currently second to last place in the round robin and doo-wop that is i guess fifth place in the round robin so both of them don't have any chance whatsoever of making it to the qualifier but I appreciate them putting on a show for us right now. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You know, I've actually there's been a lot of people giving their opinions on on the format here. Um, I, I talked about this earlier on my personal stream. Even actually, it's just the format. Unfortunately, with how it's playing out, it's it's set up for a lot of these matches in these last several days, even uh, that have frankly really had had zero impact in terms of what actually happens. And as you pointed out, this this is kind of another example of that. But Hey, you know, they're here, they're showing up, they're playing, and, and again, all the credit to them. Even, like I said, Team Freedom, we saw them play earlier against DC. They There was nothing on the line for them other than to play spoilers, and they actually played it very well, uh, especially in that first game, almost defeating DC, actually. So, in the end, they came up short, though, and, of course, DC won that series 2 nothing. But, hey, you know, we get, a, we get a solid, fun series here of two solid American teams going at it. This kind of Tier 2, I've even heard Tier 1.5, <laughs> kind of people just talking about these random tiers here. But uh, up-and-coming American teams that are looking good. So we got a draft underway, and Freedom, they managed to get their hands on Abaddon. We see a lot of teams actually banning Abaddon against Freedom because uh, IX Mike plays it very well, but uh, not this time. He gets his hands on it. So what should we expect from that? So how how well is well when you say that IX Mike plays it well? Because I actually have not uh, seen too many Freedom games myself. And so I am not familiar with the fact that Abaddon is first band, first pick, but this is exciting to me. Yeah, he's, uh, I, he time. plays a couple of, you know, fairly unique heroes. IX Mike, a player that's, of course, been around the scene for a long, long time. Um, but more so lately, I feel like uh, Abaddon has kind of been a go-to hero for them. And... I've only seen it maybe once, if twice, because, again, he is usually just banned against them. I think a lot of it's just that comfort factor. He gets the, the early mech for the team, you know, the early arcane boots, the mech for the team, and it becomes uh, very difficult to kill himself, but also for the team with the Aphotic Shield. Uh, the R also starts to kick in throughout. So I think it's just, it's just a very comfortable hero. They don't necessarily have this crazy play style around it other than just a comfort factor, so... Yeah, comfort is definitely right. Apparently, I've been sleeping on it because, in fact, Abaddon is the number one most played hero for Team Freedom. <laughs> I'm assuming that's because it's like very rarely banned, although you said that some teams are starting to respect it. But yeah, yeah seconds, there are 55 man. matches played on Abaddon, whereas their second place is Batrider with Five 31 matches. And man. it's a, a pretty sensible win rate, Abaddon, as well, with a 56% win rate. So that's, uh, I, I love seeing obscure signature heroes, and so Radiant I'm looking forward to see how this Abaddon pans out. Yeah, they got him paired up with the Leshrac here, um, as we uh, see in their second pick, and now Invoker even coming out as their third. Of course, Tomato, a fantastic up-and-coming younger player on the scene, uh, is really showing a lot of potential, and uh, Invoker is a key hero for him, as a lot of these mid players it is. So on the other side, though, Duop, they're going a pretty just overall very solid draft, it feels like. Underlord into Shadow Demon into Juggernaut here. For doo-wop. So, what do you think of their lineup so far? Underlord has been crushing it as an offlaner. He is so good against so many different lineups, and it's Dying not like pick. ever risky to pick him first pick. He's basically just a very stable draft pick that can fit into any team lineup. If you want to play defensive, then Atrofiora is obviously great. You want to play offensive, Pit of Malice, Dark Rift, and Firestorm are all great. You want to just clear out waves, make sure that your team can come back. I mean, Underlord can do it all, and then all while being a very, very strong laner. Now, Lina, on the other hand, is a hero that I have not been seeing very much. One of the most common reasons I hear is because of raindrops, which I'm sure is part of the reason why she fell off mid. But I think as a support, you she has a place, Five especially against a hero like Sven, who is very physical damage mitigation, but not so great against Reserve magic damage. Time. 
Yeah, it feels like maybe somewhere along those lines that they're looking for. And also the idea of maybe bursting somebody down before Abaddon could could help them out or even himself, you know, catching him off guard with a big ultimate from Lena and that Laguna Blade. And all of a sudden he's dead before he pops that borrowed time. So, um, but I'm with you, though, that this is not a hero that we see at all as of late. So really excited to see how Doo-Wop. Now, will they run as a support? Will it be the mid option? That's kind of the question here because uh, I feel like it could be either or at this point still. It could, but especially because as a support, I don't really think Lena does a great job of zoning out in Abaddon. Whereas Ten in the mid lineup, I actually have not seen Invoker versus Lena in ages. Five I can't even remember the last time I saw that because I think whenever Lena was active was whenever Invoker was uh, taken taking a seat on the bench as far as the popular mid meta went. But yeah, I I don't really see what Duop's plan is yet because Shadow Demons obviously. A great setup for Juggernaut. You can just put the disruption on a target like a Baden and start Blade Furying, and it's really easy to get kills on targets that way. Lena, on the other hand, I guess you could even run a 2 1 2 if you want to put her with Underlord because LSA set up with Pit of Malice, and then you get a Firestorm and Dragon Slave on top of that. That's a lot of damage on multiple targets, actually, because they're all AoE. So I'm, I'm, Lena can really go into any one of the three lanes right now. Yeah. Does feel like it. I was actually double checking too. Speaking of stats here, Lena has not been played by Duop in their team history, according to Dota Buff. As far as competitive matches, in over a hundred games they've played, they've never actually played Lena. So this is definitely something as of more recently from Duop and. Like, like we're talking about again, there's not, not a whole lot of, other than really pride on the line here. So this is a time more than any, perhaps, to just try something maybe a little different, a little radical. So we'll see again where it ends up. Their final pick going to help us get that information. They got plenty of time. Earth Spirit, the final pick for Team Freedom on the other side. So they do get their four option with uh, the Earth Spirit there. Now Freedom's lineup has come together. A team that typically, no matter what they draft, I feel like Freedom is all about early game aggression. That's kind of what they're known for. Somewhat unique draft sometimes, but just a lot of early game aggression. And hell, we even saw that earlier against DC, uh, of course, in that series. So I'm expecting that again here from them. Yeah, which is why I would expect uh, a primary Exhort Invoker as well, because Sunstrike on top of any of these squishy targets, Underlord notwithstanding, well, and I guess Alchemist notwithstanding if he has his ult active, but... Yeah, I am assuming that this is a mid-alchemist, and Lena is maybe going to try lane, which is also a good try lane option, or maybe Shadow Demon and Lena are just going to roam together, because disruption into LSA is very similar to disruption into Split Earth, which is what we true. see whenever Leshrac is paired up with the Shadow Demon. Yeah, very true. It's just hitting me as well as far as that combo goes. So yeah, now we have that obvious information that it is going to be the four support, and uh, but, uh, you know, still potentially get some okay farm, perhaps get that Blink Dagger on or something like a Yules as well. Of course, great setup for the LSA. Maybe get mentioned. gifted an Aghanim Scepter by the Alchemist as well. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, that's uh -huh. a good point. I guess when you look at the options here, she's uh, arguably one of the best ones for sure. They don't have many great <laughs> acceptors, so... That Although, uh, if it does go ultra late, Shadow Demon Ag versus a Sven is incredibly irritating to have to go against. Yep. Because even if you are spell immune, it's not going to help. So, yeah, the, 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 there's a. I like, I like Duop's lanes because all three of the cores are very independent. The Underlord can not really need any very much support. Alchemist is going to be just fine, as well as the Juggernaut. And so, Shadow Demon and Lena are really free to do whatever they want. And. If it is going to be constantly harassing this invoker, that's good. If it's going to be making sure that Ix Mike Abaddon doesn't get anything done, that's fine. Or if it's going to be bullying BSJ Sven, all are viable options. <clears throat> well, good luck, have fun's come out, and here we go. Freedom as four are headed towards the bottom lane. Tomato on that invoker, of course, the only one not with them. He does have that Xor here, is talking about. So the Sun Strike going to be good to go and assist here in a possible first blood attempt. You see, Yar scouting out with his own smoke. Not going to see, though, and this, this i mean, this is a high-potential level one killing team, so if mm, they get the jump... the worst target, though. Yeah, it immediately levels up Blade Fury. <laughs> there yeah, it's go. not going to happen. Both of them decide to waste mana, which, sure, why not? Yeah, it was a matter of Sven wanted to. I mean, oh. this, are, do they still have this? I mean, he went, he kept going. Sunstrike, that's going to be coming out. Yeah, that was the LSA there from Lena, but 
Not enough chase in the end. So yeah, with the Stormhammer still coming off cooldown, actually weren't able to get the kill in the end, but well, they pressure him a little bit, force him to use some early regen here. Aggressive try lane. They're going to steal the bounty rune, too. At the bottom. Oh, it will be a 2-2 split, though. As good job by snaking, having a heads up there. Get okay, the well, I guess that decides what Lena and Shadow Demon are going to be doing this game, because if Team Freedom wants to run an aggressive try lane, then Duop will gladly return the favor, because both teams are pretty good at getting kills. They both have set up, because Sven can set up the Leshrac, and Shadow Demon can set up the Lena, and then they both have follow-up with the Earth Spirit or the Juggernaut, so... This is going to be a very action-packed lane, and thankfully both teams also have very aggressive wards down. Dire has this ward, and Radiant has this ward up here. This should be fun to watch. You got Juggernaut, of course. Oh, we didn't get the spin off in time, actually, but nice disruption right there. Onto the Leshrac. However, in comes our Spirit. Find some good auto attacks. Juggernaut, though, he'll spin to safety, but not going to be a very safe lane for him by any means. He does have a Mango for another spin eventually once off cooldown. Going to salve up, though and be fine for now. But yeah, the aggressive play definitely starting off from Freedom here. Across the early game, and Eagle's going to keep it up. Another split Earth theme. He is a little more harassment. On to Juggernaut. So it does feel like, at least in this early part, Team Freedom definitely going to be the ones to kind of control the lane. It's just a matter of can Doo-Wop react defensively with uh, the disruption and, of course, the spin of Juggernaut really here. So if I had to and guess... Go ahead. Already out of regen, that initial little skirmish near the pre-rune fight, now Yuar had to burn through Tangos, and he's going to have to rely on his supports now, which means that he might be able to go aggressive, LSA. Right. There we go, the spin in, LSA hits, Sven. He is spinning down, one more auto attack, maybe. Oh, nice stun onto Yara right there from the Stormhammer, Sven. He manages to actually live. They're going to head to the Shrine and use it as a team. I mean, that is an advantage that this aggressive trial lane does have, you could argue, is that Shrine's going to be a bit closer uh, in terms of them falling back and using it and then resetting in the lane. So, so that used to make here. That's going to make a big difference. Siwar is now also doesn't have his Mango anymore and has been shared as Tango by the Lina, has burned through all of that. But in comes BSJ and Eagle, who are fully stocked up, and they still have plenty of regen to go through as well if they need to. We're going to go after the side of Warcry coming out. They know W fills here. It's pretty missed the barrel roll, though, on the open. And now BSJ. He, oh, he tried to storm air, but the line of sight came into play. He's going to finally get it off. Disruption is ready to go for Shadow Demon, by the way. Can he get it off in time? Yes, he can. He's going to survive for a little bit longer. And he will finally die, but he gets the first blood when it's all said and done. Meanwhile, Abaddon at the top lane, actually denying himself to the jungle. I, I would guess guess that's on purpose mm, it wasn't a deny to the jungle he miscoiled himself so oh. i he got low at some point and then was able to miscoil so i didn't see it but that's the only way that a bad can get a deny huh yeah well because where he was dead was like right on the jungle camp right there so he, so yeah, he probably right. used it on a creep as opposed denied to like in himself. the land versus underlord but yeah oh bot lane under storm hammer wasted actually spin from juggernaut and yeah he'll be fine again but that's uh, as far as the stun combo goes. Obviously, Team Freedom somewhat of an advantage here and eventually getting that kill on a Shadow Demon, but just continuing to be a lot of pressure, a lot of action, but very little kills so far. So three and a half minutes in right here. But, uh, yeah, Abaddon managing to deny himself at the top lane. Is back in it, though, and Ike's Mike. Well, the short lane, Abaddon, not often he gets to do this, but uh, with the setup here, we'll see what all, this, uh, what all this extra hype is about. Again, why teams maybe do ban it. Against him so often. Bottom lane, Shadow Demon. They're going to go in once again. Boulder Smash, dude. The split earth. Good job staggering the stuns. Is it enough follow up? No, not off the bat at least. They still want to make it happen though. Barrel will connect into some illusions, it looks like. But in the end, Shadow Demon will fall. There's a spin on the Earth Spirit. He goes down and ends up being a one for one so far. Now Juggernaut going at it with Sven. But the Soul Catcher on Sven, yeah, he wants to play very safe. And he's actually going to run away. So, well, a one for one in the end between the uh, two is Ooh, Eagle. Not yet, Eagle, though. He's. Caught between a rock and a bunch of dire heroes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. He just gave a kill to Alchemist. Uh, in the end, that's that's not what uh, what he hoped for. I'm sure. Thankfully, at least uh, they did manage to get the kill on the Shadow Demon, but that's the least valuable prize. They've been they burned through the shrine already, and 
Really, Sven isn't farming very much. He's really just looking for openings to get kills. He's keeping one eye on a creep, but the other eye on the Juggernaut to see whenever he's available to go for a Stormhammer. And as a result, BSJ has no points in Cleave right now. Ix might get a kill. Or, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That was a thanks to Leshrac, though, really. Okay. Rotated in. He TP'd up there. He set up the splitter stun. And at that point, uh, Underlord are taking too much damage, kind of panicked, and obviously couldn't get away. So. Good gank set up there. How is this middle lane going, by the way? We really have been focusing a lot on the bottom, especially. But Tomato here on Invoker, 26 and 6 against a 34 and 1 Alchemist currently. Thanks yeah, it's a pretty typical uh, benchmark for an Invoker who goes primary Exhort. Uh, against an Alchemist, you almost want to put a lot of points in Quas so that you can stand inside the Acid Spray, but like you said, Freedom likes to play high aggression, and that means that Sunstrike needs to be readily available whenever they get a Stormhammer Split Earth combo on someone, which has not been happening. That's why BSJ is so hungry for these Stormhammers, because it should be a kill on the Juggernaut easy, because even if Blade Fury comes out, uh, Sunstrike will still deal damage, but sure. it's not been working out. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's still really pushed up right here, but going to be pinked out. Has to fall back with Creep Wave. And we'll instead go back to Farmer. Look at this build, by the way. He does not have great cleave yet. So this is all action Sven right here. As far as the game, and it's going to be action right here on a Juggernaut. No. There we go with this. Stun the, uh, from Lena coming out. And actually the spin from Juggernaut will keep him alive at the time being. Not in the end, though. BSJ is able to chase him down and secure it. I was going to say, no Sun Strike happening, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. <laughs> I don't really know why. There was all the time in the world, and Juggernaut wasn't really hugging creep, so there's no reason not to. But now they might use it with this Invis Jubei onto Alina. Oh, <laughs> just Alina. He just knocks him backwards. I, I, I think he meant to put a Remnant down first. I would, I would think so, but... All right, well. It's a little silly, but guess who's here now? It's Abaddon. It's all four of them. It's... I think they're, they're going to try to push this tower. It's pretty pretty heavy. You don't send four heroes to a bottom lane like this if you don't want to be pushed. And meanwhile, BSJ just diving in. Pit of Alice going to root them a couple in place. So he's about half-life, and BSJ needed to fall back on Sven. Although, Omni Slash, no, it's not ready yet. He's only level five, not level six just yet. There's the Sun Strike. Oh. Hits a couple, gets the kill on a Juggernaut. And Shadow Demon is going to fall as well. So it ends up being a two for nothing. Four team freedom there. Sun Strike finally happening, and hey, it does oh, it do happened. work in a big way that's not often that you're like yeah i want to split the damage of the sun strike but just enough to finish off the juggernaut and enough to deal enough damage to the shadow demon as well so the rotations panning out as both i guess everyone in the top lane left underlord left and so did abaddon but it looks like it was just slightly in the favor of team freedom as they're gonna go again as they're smoked up and biryu is a very vulnerable target but once again, <laughs> he's he's having trouble with these uh, rolling boulders, man. The boulder smash a little oh, more oh. difficult, even, and not gonna connect. So yeah, they, they're really trying to cut through these trees and find it. But Fury is doing a great job of they escaping. They have a scan. They're not gonna use it. All right. Managed to escape, so That's no kill. We'll yeah, felt like that should have been a free kill, especially with the three heals right here. But he did a good job of juking and jiving, mixed with a couple of mixed. Uh, missed spells, excuse me, and that's that. Now, I want to go back to the Sven real quickly. Um, so he's maxing out the work right here. He's going to get the two points in a Stormhammer. Does that make sense to you, considering, I guess, how much action was happening down there? Yeah, he was committing to that build. It's not like halfway through. You can be like, oh, this isn't going so well. I might need a farm later. You go big or you go home. And I, the Warcry max is always fine, especially against a Juggernaut because the or a Juggernaut and an Alchemist for that matter, because Acid Spray is going to be a big issue for all of his teammates, including himself. So I'm okay with that. And then yeah. one point in Great Cleave, you'll get it eventually. It doesn't really matter if two points in Stormhammer are used. Though Ix Mike has borrowed time, he's going in real aggressive right now. Yeah, he still has it as mentioned. He's going to pop it right there, but of course Duo picking up on that and doing their best to stop putting out the damage. So that will be on cooldown now. If maybe they can make a reset here. Photic Shield, it's currently still on him, but he is out of mana. However, Storm, here, uh, Storm Hammer initiation on a Snake King and trying to chase him down. Thunderclap going to miss right there in the background. And actually a nice job with the stun from Lena. Use of the LSA right there. So keeping them off of Snake King. Underlord, a fairly tankier hero. It does have the chainmail here working on that mecha course as well as the headdress. So unable to bring him down, but they're going to go back into the uh, tower. I mean, they've been really trying to put damage into this tower here for a bit. Look at Underlord. <laughs> They're going to go back. 
Oh no, knock him out! Yeah, he knocked him out! Oh, oh. no, that lead is in trouble. Nice stun right there with the LSA, but the Sunstrike connects and Tomato gets the kill. That was well played actually by Juby there. Very well played, although all this time Alchemist is basically like even beyond free farming. Like wow. this is, he is having all the jungle to himself. None of his teammates are even there to share it because they're keeping the rest of Team Freedom busy. And Alchemist is perfectly okay if you lose Alina every once in a while because once he starts getting his Radiance, which is probably just around like five minutes away, it becomes very difficult for Team Freedom to have to fight, and, and they're like taking very aggressive fights, but if Alchemist shows up, that's not going to be able to get any kills. <laughs> I had to do a double take there, because when you said about five minutes away from a Radiance, I'm like, really? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close here. Not even not even that. I mean, yeah, he almost has a Sacred Relic, and that Radiance is just around the corner a couple of minutes here, and yeah, he's going to have that finish, so... That really is absurd. 7,700 net worth and to be this far ahead at 10, 11 minutes into the game even is just pretty ridiculous. So It's a big perk of having an Underlord because usually Alchemist has to show up for these counter pushes because Acid Spray is just True. far too valuable. But Firestorm does just as good of a job. You draw off the aggro and you make sure that the rest of the team doesn't want to just stand there and tank the tower because taking far too much damage and as a result he can stick around for this defense and he's not even afraid uh, invoker and sven they're gonna damage it but they're not gonna be able to kill this uh alchemist or even take the tower yeah has the chemical rage active so yeah he heals up he's fine the unstable concoction only level one just doing a little bit there to invoker pushing them out as you pointed out yeah able to really defend it kind of by himself mike pops the bar all the time Almost as if he was expecting some big burst to happen. I mean, Lena's still not level 6, and they're going to dive her, actually, in the background. Sunstrike on top. Tomato gets credit for the kill right there. So there's that good execution coming out. And now Freedom finally going to be able to push. Well, I guess they got the bottom tower, but now they're going to push the top tower here as well. So, again, this is Freedom as a team. This is what they do. This, this is where it starts to come online a bit, and Avedon almost has the mech. They really like to just screw up and just start pushing towers left and right. But Tomato middle lane, he'll be fine. Radiance top yeah, keep going. That's exactly what Freedom needs to do. Yeah, Radiance keep going. They unfortunately eat it into a glyph, but that's okay. They're still going to be able to do quite a bit of damage because only now are Juggernaut and Underlord feeling like rotating. God Strength popped. Oh, yeah, using that right there. And there's the war crown on top of that. It is level 4, so 20 armor coming out. He's running away with the ghost meaning of his, actually. Not able to get the tower killed in the end. I'm a little bit curious about the minion that he chose to get right there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh, whatever I can yeah. get my hands on kind of choice. But I'm glad that Freedom didn't take the fight. I don't know if they know that Underlord has his mech completed. Dyer's now they probably do. But if they had fought into that, they would have ended very, very poorly, especially because God Strength was already triggered. So let's see. Lena, did she put a ward down? She certainly did. Actually, block in right there. In the uh, in the ancient, see the stack coming out. He's trying to stack it again, but not going to happen. However, that is a uh, I want to say a triple stack there already. So quite a bit of farming potential to come, perhaps for that Sven leveling up that greater cleave. Now middle lane tomato going to have to pop the ghost walk right there as he felt the pressure pressure coming. Not stunned, but he'll survive. Gonna fall back from that. Sven, though, oh, this is Abaddon actually at the top lane. The mech finished again, and the Guardian Greaves are now queued up for Abaddon here. But snaking, rotating around with the uh, Lena, that is, as well as the Shadow Demon. They're making their way up the hill. They're going to be spotted, but can they catch the Earth Spirit? No. A little too slippery. Radiance Time he, they see him. Invoker's going to be going right into an axe here, by the way, right after the uh, Hannah Minus. They're going to find Underlord. Cold Snap being used. Split Earth hits one in the background. Eagle in the flight. Double nice. like Edict as well as the Pulse Nova. So much damage. A two for nothing as Underlord and Shadow Demon fall there. That was a perfect setup for the Storm Hammer and immediately goes into the God Strength. And now this is a, well, another push. They have Edict. Glyph is down. This is going to be... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. They took that other tier one. Never mind. My mistake. But still, they're still going to get this tower anyway. Uh, Alchemist is here. Yeah, they're going to lose it, but okay, I'm not going to fight this. 747, seven, just keeping his distance. Not going to go too crazy here, but yeah, with that Radiance as mentioned, has that now. I'm going to farm out the lane, but definitely good job by Freedom. And the fact that they have over a 2,000 net worth lead going up against a free farming Alchemist, it's not too shabby. That, that's got to feel pretty good. <laughs> 
for Not too shabby, but you have to keep in mind that Duop has not taken a single tower yet, so that's a lot of gold that's going to be returned as soon as they feel like grouping up, which True. now that this Radiance is completed, and like I had said earlier, Mechanism completed on Snake King's Underlord, there's really no time like the present to start claiming that gold. What have we here? Top lane being pushed out by Juggernaut here. He's got his own Helm of the Dominator, of course. He does have that Purge Creep, no CRR, so... Going to be using that if necessary. IX Mike, though, getting a little bit closer to those Guardian Greaves. Yes. What's going on down here? Yeah, Lena just still trying to finish her own Arcane Boots. Her and Shadow Demon both not really getting the most farm. Ooh, it's a little nice. unfortunate. I mean, I know Lena doesn't necessarily need crazy farm, but at the same time, it's nice to have decent farm on a 4 uh, Lena. Being able to get even some solo kills and get positioned at it with the Blink Dagger or Yule Scepter, as is even talking about. Pretty solid items to be picking up, but at this rate, she's not going to have any of those for a bit here. It's the it's the classic case of any supporter who has to play with an alchemist sure. because, like, it, it you really want to get that one camp, and you're like, well, what what carry's going to worry about a small camp? But alchemist cares. He cares a lot because the small camps are actually the best thing for him. Camps that farm. There's the bots picked up on alchemist. Speaking of him, so. Guess what? His farm continues to be really good. Middle lane, not enough damage. Even That was even before the borrowed time was popped, but the, <laughs> the Laguna Blade actually from Lena wasn't enough damage prior to that, so thought he had enough. He did not. Abaddon doesn't really end up healing up as a result, but at least he stays alive. And he'll walk it off. Borrowed time will be on cooldown for the next 40 seconds, though, but I don't really know why Duob doesn't care about pushing. I mean, they're not really that scared about going late, even though Invoker does have a minus old BS shake and he gone in on popped Warcry already, so he has a lot of armor though, and S M forty seven doesn't have chemical rage anymore. Yeah, not gonna be worth no stun, so not gonna be the case. But yeah, as you're talking about it, it's it's the mentality of uh of doo -wop here. It does feel like that maybe they're just comfortable playing this kind of four one strategy almost, where you guys do your thing while Alchemist just continues to get crazy, crazy farm. And then, you know, once he's five-slotted or so, we'll, we'll maybe look to be fighting. Once he has the Manta style, maybe the Octarine, you know, things like that, we'll be good to go. But we're kind of just doing the split push for now. Pressuring out mid a little bit. Demonic Courage is actually used on Leshrac to make sure that, I guess, Leshrac doesn't get any setup. Make sure that Magnetize, which is now online and we haven't seen be used yet, doesn't be too much of a concern in a team fight because, yeah, I mean, not only is the Alchemist farming, but Juggernaut also has not been really anywhere near his team for the past five to ten minutes. Yeah. I, you know, I am kind of on board with what you're saying. The more I'm thinking about it, though, it does feel like, you know, you got the Helm of the Dominator Juggernaut. He has an Alpha Wolf with him. You have a level 15 Alchemist now, and actually they're going to try to go for Sven, but again, he's a little bit too far away. Good reaction of the Blink Dagger, which he chose to get pretty early on. Kind of goes to the point, though, that when it comes to grouping up and just pushing snowballing here for Duo, I feel like they can do pretty well. Now, they do not have Juggernaut here, and they're going to be jump Sunstrike on a 747 already at half-life. The Dark Rift will go off in time. They put him under, actually. Disruption comes out, and yes, the Dark Rift gets off in time to save everyone but Lena. But, you know, again, you'll take that casualty considering how the fight started right there. It was pretty good timing. 747 was, uh, he was... I guess pretty deep, and so Stormhammer, Tower Aggro, Sunstrike immediately made sure that Pit Lord was like, no, we gotta, we gotta leave this fight because otherwise, you would think like you said, level 15, Radiance Alchemist, Radiance Armlet, Bot Alchemist should be able to stand up to a Sven, but this Sven has been getting a lot of ancient camps and being able to keep the pace now going on. Underlord, that's a dead Underlord. Oh, wow, yeah, really diving deep down here at the bottom lane. And uh, managed to get him and Air Spirit actually mixed up. Well, Shadow Demon, what am I saying? Shadow Demon also gets mixed up in that, killed by the likes of Air Spirit and others. And now 747, a very late initiation. That's going to be regretful here. He is going to maybe not die. Oh my god, he's going to live. The armlet toggle at the last second keeps him alive. about to time out, though. That's true, so, so the regen not going to be as much. Oh, look at that damage on BSJ. Sunstrike. Oh, it's going to miss, though. He's going to keep on moving. Vision. They do have fish, and the stun comes out, and they finally will chase him down. So, hell of a job to escape initially, but not in the long run, but you really got to... Honestly, it's only his fault to, like, he went in there very late <laughs> in the first place. 
Exactly, yeah, I mean, seeing as how Radiant's they had to evacuate that previous tier one fight, I'm surprised that he felt confident enough going into this Radiant's after two of his teammates were already downed. Gone. Really nice LSA by Lena and like, I guess some good toggles, but that doesn't help you get kills, it just helps you not die. And now all of the tier twos are down for team doo-wop and Freedom have only have one tier one tower gone. So the structural and map control of Team Freedom is immense compared to Duop right now. Illusion. Well, yeah, I wanted to bring this up earlier with Tomato actually as, oh, well, Sven going Chrysalis. Yeah, that's Chrysalis right into a, a Daedalus here as far as his progress goes. That's a very greedy yet. He's going to potentially do plenty of damage build. Go with the Blink Jagger as well as the Helmet Dominator. But uh, the Ags actually on Invoker, I mean, usually you've seen Ags, of course, but usually a little bit later. I feel like, if anything, maybe uh, Yule Scepter first, but he pretty much went right into that Ags, even for more bots, I want to say. Um, do you think that makes sense as to why he did it? The justification is that right now the rest of his team has been making a ton of space. We haven't seen Invoker participate in a single fight yet, and usually you can't go for Ag first because you do need to show up to fights. And building up to the Ag, the points uh, booster, the Ogre Club doesn't help you in fights. You usually need to get earlier mid-game items. But with an Abaddon, with an Earth Spirit, and with the Sven going high, high aggression, Invoker was allowed to do his own thing. And now that the Ag is completed, that makes Alchemist's life even harder because He's being able to show up to fights, and if he gets kited, he's not going to be able to get a kill on a Sven. If they man up against each other, Sven wins that fight every time. Middle lane, they're defending Abaddon, of course, leading the way. He's feeling comfortable. They're going to get Shadow Demons on strike. Not even going to hit before he dies. And that's a nice kill for them, and they'll be out without WFL that is. All of, actually, over here, the Dark Rift activated. Byron, though, will fall before. Snaking makes it out. But they did enough damage onto Lena between the Earth Spirit and the Leshrac to take him out before he could get away as well. So, Team Freedom really, I mean, wow. You know, I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention to the overall hero kills, but 16 to 2 hero kills in favor of this uh, Team Team Freedom side. And they just lost the Courier, by the way. Oh, yes, well. they did. Where did that happen? And that, oh. was, a, that was a Manta style recipe on it, too. Yeah. Oh man, Alchemist would have really liked that. Yeah. That's going to be gone for a while, and now that Aegis is up on the Sven and all these items are completed, I'm not surprised if we're going to see a high ground push very soon. Tomato's going to push up this top lane, but I think the rest of the team are going to be pushing out <laughs> mid. <laughs> I just, I still can't get over this idea of the Sven build. It just feels so funky to me. The, obviously, the Helm of the Dominator and the Blink Dagger is it's fine, but then into a freaking Daedalus? <laughs> That's just like all-out offense here. Now, again, if the Dota 2 gods are in his favor, it's going to be doing plenty of damage when it comes to that crit. And maybe going to see a little bit here. Look at that pop god strength. Don't tell me he's going to get it. Oh, <laughs> he gets the crit off the bat. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, there you go. That's why you got it. I think it's hilarious that you kids talk trust about BSJ. <laughs> kids of God. Never. Never Didn't even miss. Again. Didn't even Radiance miss. No. That's how good. He, he got the item because he knew that's exactly how it would play out. That was now, All three lanes are being pushed in right now. There's no Alchemist, which means no Radiance Manta style, which wouldn't have been on the table anyway because the Courier's dead, but also no Acid Spray. God's Strength is down, though, for a little bit, but... This is still a very, very strong push. Somebody ported away. Oh, no, just on the radiant side right there, porting back. So, yeah, BSJ leading the way now. Doesn't have God Strength as you talked about right there. So, not as threatening, but still potential to do plenty of damage and pounding away at the tower. Again, the Aegis ready to go. Laguna Blade is back used. now. That was a Laguna Blade coming out from Lena. Not really doing a whole lot. Invoker follow up right here. The meatball comes out. Doing so much damage on top of the Deafening Blast. Night job with the disruption onto the Underlord, though. And now 747 in the fight. Chemical Rage has been popped. He's going to be stunned initially, but going on to Earth Spirit. Magnetized out, doing a lot of work. Yarar spinning in the front lines, too. But Sven is still going back at him. Still with that Aegis. A stun in the background on the two. Already see some big crits. No, he gets locked down. The Cleave not going to matter right there. So they're just going to keep kiting him to the best of their ability. Another Shrine being used off the side. BSJ, though, he's pissed, man. He wants a kill. Gets a little bit of a crit there. Not nearly enough. However, this team is killing the racks in the meantime. Playing a little bit of a distraction. Ice Mike coming over the underside. Sven, though, actually, on the spin on top, he goes down. 
And now maybe regretting going a little bit too deep. The Melee Rex actually does stay alive right here. IX Mike, yep, he's going to fall borrow time, not off okay. cooldown. So they don't get the Melee Rex, but they did get the Range Rex at least. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, and they get a nice Sunstrike kill on Alina. But again, just Constellation prizes. I am very surprised that Team Freedom wanted to continue pursuing that fight after Alchemist came up because BSJ does not have a BKB on this Sven. Like we've been saying multiple times, it's pure damage, it's pure aggression. There is no way for him to mitigate outside of an Aphotic Shield. And so he was getting kited, he, he popped the God Strength after it finally came off cooldown, which was, I guess, after the entire tier 3 went down and after Omni Slash came out, only then was God Strength up again. But then he wasn't able to get the close the gap on anyone. He got disrupted by the Shadow Demon. He got hit of malice by the Honor Lord. And then after he finally closed the gap on someone, the rest of his team was already dead. Magnetize was going out, and it did a lot, but the blade mail of this Alchemist made sure that Earth Spirit wasn't going to be able to keep it going. So that may be a pretty poor fight now. At least they're getting something onto this Honor Lord. Getting some damage out, but yeah, he's gonna see. You see, he goes uh, invis there and off to the side now. The pit of malice down, Earth Spirit. There we go. Laguna Blade to take him out in the end. So, what happened? BSJ died somewhere. Where the hell he, he died? Way up here at the top lane, Alchemist. And look at that. They're gonna push here between Alchemist and Juggernaut, and they join them with the Dark Rift. This is oh, what you like to really see. False. They're going for a tier two push when they're tier three. Well, I guess they can TP back. Yes, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. A dark Rift. Well, that's what, was, that's what I was just about to say. I mean, that, that that's how you should be using Dark Rift, is Absolutely. offensively like that. Split push, so. I don't know how Sven got caught out. I mean, I'm assuming it's because they had Vision on him farming a creep wave, and, well, I mean, Alchemist doesn't have, like, a Blink Dagger or anything, and neither does Juggernaut, so I don't really know how they were able to sneak up on him like that, but and that's a really good kill. At least Tomato gets a Courier kill, but might pay for it. Nope, he's out. <laughs> Yeah, he actually was TPing, but then he saw the courier coming over, so he's like, I'm going to snipe this, and he went and did that. And he does manage to slip on out of there, so. There was nothing on the courier this time around, but still, nice courier snipe. Look at Eagle, by the way, on Leshrac. He's got a freaking pipe. Uh, looks like he's building into that uh -huh. Lotus Orb now with bots. Jesus. He's got good farm. Yeah, this is exceptional farm. I'm surprised that he went for the pipe first, though. I don't, I mean... There's Firestorm, and then I guess Lena's stuff, and I guess Radiance Burn. So it'll get burned off, but I would have felt that Leshrac would have preferred going for something more aggressive, especially if he's that farmed up. Like, even the Lotus Orb first, I feel, would have been a little bit better because it provides more mana regen, which Leshrac desperately needs, as we see Eagle is just going around with not very much ways to farm right now. Like, usually Leshrac should be soaking up these jungle camps, which he will now, but yeah, now he doesn't have the mana for the pipe, so... That's a good point, yeah. Bit of a strange item build, but that's been the case for all the heroes on Freedom, so <laughs> yeah. we'll see how it all works out. Okay, th this is one of these just unique and fun teams. I, I do enjoy casting them for that reason, between some hero picks to not afraid to do the, just their style of builds. It's uh, It could be entertaining to watch. So another kind of case of that here. Abaddon, top lane. He's going to push out the illusions, or attempt to at least. But you see Alchemist now with the Octarine Core, as well as that Blade Mill himself, as we were mentioning earlier, to go with the Radiance and the Manta style. So he is a very scary hero at this point. I guess he is essentially six-slotted unless he's going to replace. Oh, yeah. I mean, what would he replace? Uh, it, has to be, it has to be Scepter time. I mean, you, the blade mail is too far too valuable. As we all know from the Boston Major, blade mail is the ultimate oh, six God. slot item on an alchemist. Yeah, I'm find Tomato. Here. There's no sniper on the other side, though. That's true, actually. But there is a Sven, a Sven with Daedalus. Yeah, that's that. Okay. And that other game sniper was what rapier sniper, I believe. It was uh, so, rapier, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, one one stray crit, and you just might be killing yourself. True that, true that, and yeah, Sven with that cleave damage, it's, you gotta be careful when that blade mills up, so. Gonna pop the god strength right here and actually take out just a single set of ancients as well as push out the top lane. Curious use of that god strength, especially if they're planning to siege up here, I mean. Because that's gonna be on cooldown now for another minute or so. 
Uh, yeah, doesn't sieging seem like and the fact that Roche may be up very soon, and they would like to sneak that Roche as quickly as possible. Uh, they're going to fall back, though, so no siege to be had. Tomato, meanwhile, almost playing his own game over here as he tends to on this invoker, and as many invokers would. He's just pushing out the bottom lane. Has another 3,400 gold saved up. His own Octarine Corp is coming along. There's that Lotus Orb finished on Leshrac, so a little, little bit of mana regen. Lane. He gets caught. Yes, he does. He does have that for all the time again. Forest stab maybe. He's going to pop it right there. Laguna Blade coming out. I think I saw that. Yeah, that was Laguna Blade. And he will survive. Now Roche going to be up in a minute. Both teams are going to be very close to patrol this. It's actually surprised that they didn't kill the Centaur that the Dire team is using to scout it. But they're going to go for a Tier 2 push so that hopefully they can kill this Shrine next. And then Dire team has a real tough time competing for this Roche. And Delore is not afraid of getting jumped on himself. He has his own pipe, of course. His plate mail, the Shivas. Oh, it's Guardian. Guardian Greer is going to be in the works, but yeah, Shivas eventually, oh, I assume. Alchemist going ultra aggressive. Uh, <laughs> he just stunned himself, but he's going to be fine. Try to manta it, but not in time. Meanwhile, on his side, in the background on Ike's mic, and he did not have borrowed time off. So he goes down now. BSJ is also on the run, actually, this whole time. He pops the God Strength. He's going for the big turn. The sun. Nice man stuff from Yara right there. The totem goes down. Can he get the big crits? He absolutely can right there. BSJ. With the kill on to Juggernaut over back here. Underlord going to be picked off, actually. And now it seems like Team Freedom in control of this fight, despite losing Abaddon initially. He bought back, of course, and he helps assist to make more plays. And now the chase on a W foe. Not going to happen, but... So it actually was okay for Duop with the jump, but even despite the stunning himself, over Team Freedom came back. It's okay for right now, but Roche is up, and Juggernaut and Underlord neither have buyback. Ab Abaddon did buy back for that fight after he went down, but this, uh, this might be a Freedom Roche when really they should have had no place getting it this easily. It should have at least been a fight in the pit, but not, that's not even going to happen. And he did just get an axe, by the way, on Alchemist, so... Um so who, who ah. does he give it to? Okay, Shadow he Demon. To the Shadow Demon, yes. Problem is that it's uh, kind of an underleveled Shadow Demon. He's level 12 now, so I don't really know. Hopefully he didn't level Shadow Poison, or maybe he's just sitting on it. I don't know. But yeah, Demonic Purge for a BKB-less Sven. I was saying it was going to be an issue for a Sven with a BKB, but a BKB-less Sven is not only going to get kited, but he's also going to take buckets of damage. Yeah. And so he has... No lifesteal either. This, uh, this Sven, I fear for him. I'm pretty sure he did put another point into, into Shadow Poison, adding up the points. So, yeah, he's going to be a level 1 for now. But he's 12 and a half. I'm sure when he, thir when he hits 13, exactly. he will get that second level. But even with the 1, it's still very powerful. Meanwhile, down here, look at Alchemist. Look at a turn on Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit regretting this decision to try to chase him down. And maybe not. Tomato, here to assist. Nice ice path right there. Not going to be enough follow-up, though. We'll just throw out that EMP. And burn some of that mana away. Not going to fully commit, however. Sven with another Aegis, as mentioned, though. AC on him, and BKB almost finished now for BSJ on the Sven here. And that is going to be a key item as we're going back to. Yeah, and as we progress in this game, let's, uh, let's take a quick inventory of the talents right now. Alchemist hit level 20, opted for the attack speed. Invoker, with his level 20, is going for plus 7 to all stats. And Sven, with his level 20, went for the attack speed as well. So even more aggression. Did not go for the evasion talent on the Sven, which, man, this is... He is hoping for the most amazing initiation, because if he doesn't get it, it's curtains. I mean, he went for early Daedalus. I'm not surprised to see him go in full blow, and let's just add up that damage kind of build right here, so... Yeah, now he is uh, hidden hard, hidden fast. It's just a matter of can he stay alive and not get kited. Again, the BKB ideally will help with that. Leshrac bottom lane. Look at all these illusions. This is the Alchemist army chasing after him. Actually doing some pretty good damage. will be fine in the end, but yeah, it kind of shows you that uh, even the illusions forced to reckon with here. Oh, wow. 747, you need to be careful. Uh, he needs to be a lot, a lot of careful. He did pop the chemical rage right there, and he's gonna split up with the mantis style though. 
He has a stun ready to go. He's going to take a stun himself, though. Can he get it off in time? He can. On Eagle in the background. The meatball's coming out, however. And the burn is real. The Pit of Malice locking them down. Nice stun from Lena back so here. Here comes the Cosmic from Sven, though. And he popped that PKB. As mentioned, EMP coming out. And Alchemist just simply trying to run this whole time. But the Ice Path keeping him in place. He has a buyback. Not using it just yet, though. But look at that purge slow on his Sven, as mentioned. There we go with the Dark Rift. Can they maybe knock him away? The Boulder Smash not going to connect. He throws him in the air with the Yules. It ain't going to matter, though. And they all escape. But they killed Alchemist. Killed Alchemist, they still have the Aegis on Sven. There's no BKB now, but most of the spells that you need to be concerned about are down, unless if Alchemist buys back. And so much for all that. They'll be satisfied with that, though. That uh, gives them a window now for the next six minutes or so. Six and a half minutes even that they have to kind of reset some things and then eventually push in, get the Alchemist killed, and then he won't have a buyback. Tomato top lane, wow. By himself, he distracts the whole team while they're pushing bottom now. So the split push is very real for Team Freedom. And they do get the tower kill. So great great distraction there from Tomato on that Invoker. Gets them all to come to him. And yeah, he's level 23. So speaking of talent tree progression, almost level 25. And I'm sure that's going to be in the AoE Deafening Blast coming. And the most recent candidate for level 20 is Juggernaut, who I've been talking about nearly all of Duop's heroes in great detail. But Juggernaut has been going under the radar. and. I am really not too surprised. Like, he's not been seeming to have such an impact in these fights. And I don't really know why. Like, he was free farming for a very long time, as we said. Both Alchemist and Juggernaut were off doing their own thing. Meanwhile, mid lane, down goes the Underlord. Yep. No crits there, but didn't need it. Oh, now he's going for Alchemist, actually. He pops the BKB. Again, though, look at that perch slow. And he's like, all right, screw it. I'll kill your illusions then. Although Invoker keeping Alchemist nearby. That Ice Path is doing a lot of work this game. Another stun comes out. Can he get the crit? That Blade Mail, though. You got to be careful. A deafening Blast through. Nice job with the Disruption. Saving him for the time being. The Laguna Blade onto Eagle in the background on the Leshrac. And he will fall. Look at Alchemist now. He wants to chase Chemical Rage coming back up here in just a second. Blade Mail ready. Nice Manta style dodge. Beautiful reaction on the part of 747. He's running them down with that Radiance. Doesn't have mana, actually, for the Chemical Rage just yet. He has mana for the stun, though, if he needs to cancel a TP, which BSJ might need to. Oh, he pops a Chemical Rage. Yeah, they're not going to get him. Or he's not going to get out, that is. They do get the Aegis, but can they support? Tomatoes here. The Tornado not going to connect, but the EMP will. BSJ just simply running this whole time. He's going to maybe look to turn. It looks like for now he has to. He's purged, so he really has to fight. He has no choice right here. He's just screwed. The Warcry pop not going to matter. He will fall when it's all said and done. So they chase him out. They get the kill on the Sven. And no buyback for 80 seconds, actually. And the other thing that I just realized that I didn't mention is that Shadow Demon has also been breaking Sven in addition to kiting him, which means that Great Cleave will... I mean, you'll, you'll crit one target, but no one behind that target is going to get critted, or even touched for that matter. Good point. Yeah, no, that's, that is a really good axe now that <laughs> we're looking at it. For the slow but the passive breaker, that's that's like an anti-spin ability. It's very anti-spin. Even though they're getting reasonably good initiations, if you can't manage to tornado or EMP the Shadow Demon, then the Sven is not going to be able to do very much. This BKB pickup in that bot tier 2 fight worked out really well as Tomato is prowling on W foe here. Like a gazelle. <laughs> do I go for Quiet. it? Do I go for it? Uh, he wants to, but... <clears throat> Underlord nearby makes it a little more difficult. So yeah, he's not going. He's going to skip the creep wave here, most likely, or just keep running around, seeing if anyone else shows up. This bottom, uh, you know. So I was going to say, actually, speaking of this, it does Sven get a Lincoln's? Would that actually be good in this case? He is not going to be able to get the Lincoln. Someone else should get the Lincoln's for yeah. him, like the Leshrac, okay. perhaps, instead of going for. I don't actually know if Lord Lotus Orb purges the purge. Because that's how this game works. Oh, yeah. Uh, no clue. Not entirely sure if it's purgeable or not. But if it is, then Leshrac can't really use this Lotus Orb preemptively. He has to use it. At, man, Tomato. He wants someone so bad. <laughs> Still haunting. He's waiting for them to be by themselves. And now he has a candidate in Underlord. Granted, it's yeah. one of the hardest he heroes to kill. Vision, but he sees Yawar coming in. Ah, oh, poor guy. Not going to happen, so Tomato instead will have to just keep being... Oh, okay, well, actually, this, this is it. Juggernaut, they're pinging here. They know they saw somebody up there. 
There we go. He jumps in now. Ooh. Hex comes out. They're committing. Nice path. Not the greatest placement. We'll slow him down a little bit. Meepaw comes out. Can they kill Yara first? No, they cannot. BSJ in chase with that BKB, but cannot connect onto it. The Sunstrike in the background will see if it hits. It doesn't look like it, but the God Strength that BKB is up. 747 just running away, though. Very good by two for treating. And look at that Ooh. Lotus Orb coming out. Laguna Blade doing some good burst there on, onto uh, the Sven. And he needs to run now. Meanwhile, Abaddon in the midst of it does pop Burrow time. Only going to save him for a little bit longer, though. And that drops a gem, meanwhile. The Uber's up. Where are they going? Middle lane, it looks like. And they're going to push, baby. They're going to push with a vengeance as well. Oh, looks like Alchemist will go back to defend, but he has BOTs if necessary. And he, oh, man, going Poof. back by himself might be a mistake. Well, the, and this is, I like that by Tomato, though, because you see what happened there on the minimap. All of a sudden, everyone at Duop, they turned around and even ported back in some cases, realizing that their Alchemist was getting jumped, when I really feel like Tomato had no intention of going for any kind of kill. He's just simply baiting them back. So, yeah, good play on his part. Yeah, so much for that vengeance push. <laughs> Looks like yeah. we're back to doing nothing again as Tomato. And I, I, I'm enjoying watching this so much. He's basically just playing Clinks right now. <laughs> he kind of is. Yeah, there's enough damage this time on Shadow Demon, probably, yeah. Okay, there you go. He's, he is like a different Clink. You are didn't even care. He just saw it happening underneath him. He was just like, man, that sucks. I'll see you later. <laughs> Nothing that he could do. Maybe if he had a blank to get over there in time, but yeah, yeah, there's no way he was making it to save the day. He does have his abyssal blade, though. Like you're right, mentioning that earlier. I mean, you look at the stat line of a juggernaut: three, three, and five at 40 minutes into the game. It's not the most impressive. Granted, they only have 11 kills total, but uh, his. I mean, abyssal blade will definitely help the cause now. Yeah, his job is basically to help with the kite Sven party because. I mean, Juggernaut has surpassed the Sven in net worth, but it really does not feel like that. But he's gone for utility item. He's gone for this Mjolnir, which helps with the static shield a lot with all the, I guess, small amounts of damage that come flying out from Team Freedom, like the Pulse Nova, the Edict, the Magnetize. And then this Abyssal Blade is also going to make sure that this Sven, who even within BKB, he's going to get purged and he's going to get stunned now as well. Oh, by the way, Juggernaut was given an Ags as well. Yeah. Ooh. I just okay. noticing that. I noticed that. I figured the Alchemist probably gives somebody else that was looking around, and sure enough, Juggernaut gets it. That's surprising, though. I would have figured that Lena is a better candidate, but eh, whatever. Chase is on. Yara, not going to get a jump there, but they will find Leshrac. That's going to be an easy kill. Lotus Orb ain't going to save you. Maybe kill the Shrine. Oh, up. no. The secondary tower is up here. But yeah, you're right. Roshan's up, and Lena's going to see that here. Kill the Purge Creep first, a Seder. And now maybe think about doing it, or maybe not, because Alchemist is actually back at base. He's defending. He has BOTs in 10 seconds, though. Might push out this bottom lane. Oh, they're going to meet in the mid lane, though. Yeah, they are. Alchemist again, not here. The Purge, though, under Earth Spirit, but he quickly blinks. Very well played by him. And Tomato, of course, Ghost walks away. Invoker is in a perfect flanking position, though. He's queuing up. Deafening Blast and Meat, I mean, Tornado and Meatball. Yara running in, wants to get that Abyssal Blade stun off, but Max Mike doing a good job of keeping the perfect distance, not allowing for it. So Alchemist will continue to push out. Another 6,800 gold on Alchemist, by the way. So uh, now we'll probably see, or eventually we'll probably see an Ags on Lena. Oh, they're snuffing up. Tomato does not know, and he's in vision right Stun. now. Stun, here we go. Oh! <laughs> Game sense. Oh my god, literally Riders are going in. Talk about Game Sense indeed. That was impressive. As he continues to do so, they're going to get away middle lane. Alchemist is coming in though, angrily. <laughs> he wants, I don't know if Abaddon's your prime target though. They're going to try, but Alchemist is actually in a little bit of a hurt as uh, being slowed down once again by this ice path. However, no follow up. Hey, you can tell that's a little bit of a, <laughs> a pissed off Alchemist there. Kind of force don't something. You ever, don't you ever stand on my dead shrine area again. Yeah. Oh, man. Now, Sunstrike, everyone knows about this Roche, but it's going down very, very quickly. A lot of evading going on right now, but this is probably going to be the force of a fight with that Roche on. Chemical Rage, of course, up for Alchemist here. In the background, there's the war cry. Oh, nice Lotus Orb reflect action. They're going to go back in with it. BSJ with a cleave. Going to take it Underlord? Yes, the crits come out. 1,300 damage, I believe. It's AoE Deafening Blast. Who's going to get the Aegis? Never mind. He's actually still alive. I thought I heard it go down right there as the buyback onto Underlord. Meanwhile, 
Sven trying to kite away, takes another stun. Lena picked off in the background by Leshrak. Alchemist, though, he's here. He pops the Manchester style to be slow by that ice path. They're kiting him somewhat. Abaddon does not have borrowed time. He's taking some good auto attacks, but Team Freedom definitely winning this fight. In fact, Alchemist getting low. The sun start coming out, not going to matter. Down goes Alchemist. He does have a buyback, but Juggernaut and Shadow Demon do not. And that is going to be the Roshan now in favor of Freedom. And there's the Aegis for Sven. Somewhere, Ice Frog has a smile on his face right now. That has to be one of the sickest Lotus Orbs I've ever seen. Yeah. Not only did it reflect the unstable concoction, but it reflected, bounced it onto the Underlord and the Alchemist. Doing it again, Eagle making us proud that this item exists in the game right now. VSJ, though, needs to evacuate. BKB is not up until five more seconds. Oh, no. VSJ being run down to the other burst form. No Laguna play just yet. He has mentioned, but not going to be enough. Another Lotus Orb comes out. He doesn't have an elbow. The BKB is popped, and all of a sudden, Lito's like, crap, nothing I can do now. Trying to run away. The crits are happening. Pops the Shrine. Will survive, actually as Sven blinks on out. Meanwhile, Sven gets uh, pushed back in by the force damage. It seems like Warcry not going to matter there. He does fall, but of course the Aegis bringing it back up. Has team support nearby. Should be able to get out of this. Alchemist wants to make the kill. There's a little good of Blade. Actually, Lotus Orb just a little bit too late there. We'll purge him, though. And going to go retreat. Now, Alchemist, yeah, you're diving into a trap, it feels like. They're going to turn on him. He doesn't have a buyback. Shadow even puts him under. But if they kill Ak, that could be GG. Possibly, well, it's not going to matter. <laughs> that was an 1800, I believe, I saw pop up there in favor of Sven. And now he is dead for 120 seconds. Overextension, I feel like, for 747 there. Oh, yo, wait. VSJ buys a refresher, refreshes. So he has his BOTs up, he has his BKB up, and he has God Strength up again. Oh wow, that's a that's a nifty move right there. Pops a God Strength and goes right back into the phase. Talk about some uh, some fun strats coming out indeed. It's a big Lotus Orb, a nice use of the refresher there. Going to be forced out for now. Even without Alchemist, they're able to hold us. Again, Juggernaut, he's got some decent farm himself. But they do lose the melee racks. The stun on a Juggernaut in the background, by the way. The meatball comes out. Underlord's dead. He ain't buying back. Juggernaut maybe going to fall. Shadow Demon puts him under, delaying the inevitable, it feels like. Can he maybe Omni Slash? Yes, he can. Will that actually save him? Probably not. He's going to bounce way back here until his career is finally ending. And GG well played is called victory for Team Freedom here in game number one. Tomato playing last stage of Dark Moon. Invoker in those last few seconds of the game. I am really crediting that entire win on Freedom from that one Lotus Orb Unstable Concoction. That was such good timing and at like the perfect point of the game. They got the Roche, immediately followed up with everything, and an Alchemist that was this far ahead. It, I mean, the, the higher they go, the harder they fall, and well played by Team Freedom. Yeah, and I'm with you. It's that that Lotus Orb reflection was absolutely insane by Eagle. Well played indeed, and uh, that Roshan fight definitely deeming the victory for Team Freedom. So very fun to watch. And I also got to say this this Tomato player, I, I really like watching him, especially more and more. That I've got the chance to cast between several events uh, with Team Freedom and him on it. And uh, I know that he's a younger player on the scene, but he's got to be one of these prodigy players that. Uh, has a bright future ahead of him. He had a, another great Invoker game here and uh, one that's continuing to be fun to watch when it comes to watching Team Freedom. And we get one more game to watch with him, as well as Doo-Wop, that is, and see if they can get revenge here in game number two. So, ladies and gentlemen, a short break coming up, but we do have our final game of the night going to be happening. Doo-Wop versus Team Freedom, game number two. Again, I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Tsunami. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> 